If you're planning to do, or perhaps just even read and understand systematic literature review and meta-analysis, your starting point has to be that you've got a clear understanding of exactly what is being done. And that's what we're gonna deal with in this video. If you're doing a systematic literature review, you're doing three things, right? Firstly, you'll identify relevant research that focuses on a very specific question. Now that research has to be selected based on pre-specified eligibility criteria. And we're gonna talk more about the importance of systematic literature review being replicatable later on in this video. Secondly, you're gonna appraise the research, and that means that you're gonna look at both the quality of the studies performed and at the strength of the evidence in the papers that you find. And finally, you're gonna synthesize your findings so that you can draw some kind of conclusion, right? This is often, but not always, done using meta-analysis, right? And we're gonna talk more about meta-analysis in just a minute, so stay tuned. Now, it's important to note that if you do a systematic literature review, because you're trying to answer a question, you are in fact undertaking a kind of research. So your methods must be clearly stated. You've got to describe how you identified, how you appraised, how you synthesized the studies so that your work can be replicated and sometimes even repeated as additional evidence gets added to the body of literature over time. Now you have to start by clearly defining the question that you're trying to answer. And it's quite common to use the mnemonic PICO as a framework. Now, PICO stands for P, patient or problem or population, I, intervention, right? C, comparison or control, and O, outcomes. And it's by defining these aspects of your research question very clearly, it becomes possible for you to get going on your literature search strategy. A super quick interruption to this video to say thanks to Nested Knowledge. Nested Knowledge sponsors this channel and I absolutely love them. Nested Knowledge is an online platform that you can use to do literature review and systematic literature review. And what I love about this platform is that I'm using it for the entire process, beginning to end, all the way from search, screening, tagging, extraction, all the way through to actually writing the manuscript, creating a living document online. And I've got my entire team using it, so we collaborate, different people doing different parts of the process. I used to hate literature review, now I love it. If you wanna love literature review, check out Nested Knowledge, click on the link in the description below. And without further ado, on with the video. So let's talk about your search strategy. One of the biggest challenges that you're gonna face when doing a literature search is that you're gonna find too many papers. So you need predefined inclusion and exclusion criteria. This might include limiting the search to only those that contain certain types of studies, like a randomized control trial, for example, or limiting the search to include only studies that were published in a certain time frame, like over the last 10 years, for example. These limitations are fine, provided that you can provide a rationale for them and that you define them ahead of doing the search itself. Now let's talk about appraising the studies or the appraisal of the studies. The quality and the strength of each study must be appraised. This includes both the size of the study, but also the type of study performed. So a randomized control trial provides stronger evidence than a cohort study, which provides stronger evidence than a case control study, for example. Look for things like whether or not the study protocol was registered before the study was undertaken. Registering a study is an excellent way to protect against p-hacking. Now, p-hacking is a process whereby researchers will consciously or unconsciously adjust their research methods as they go along to nudge the study results in a certain direction so as to draw a certain desired conclusion. And finally, let's talk about the synthesis. The evidence is extracted and synthesized, and this could be quantitative, right? Pooling of the results using a meta-analysis, or it might be a narrative synthesis, which is sort of more qualitative, and often it's a combination of both. So let's talk about meta-analysis. This is the most common form of synthesis. Meta-analysis is a statistical technique for quantitatively pooling results of individual studies. The results are usually presented in a forest plot. Okay, and I'm gonna talk you through how to interpret a forest plot in just a minute, so stay tuned. Now importantly, studies can only be combined in this way if they're sufficiently similar. In other words, if studies are too heterogeneous, right, they're too different from each other, then it doesn't make sense to pool the results. Heterogeneity can result from, number one, differences in the population being considered, number two, differences in the intervention being considered, number three, differences in the outcome being measured, number four, methodological differences, and number five, chance. Now let's take a look at the elements included within a meta-analysis. First, we have the names of the trials, of course. Then for each trial, we've got the trial results, okay, and it's usually an odds ratio, and the size of the square indicates the relative size of the study. Here we have the 95% confidence limits around the individual trial results. And of course, we've got the weight that each trial contributes to the overall pooled results. Then we've got the pooled results, that's if meta-analysis is done and it's not always done. And the points of the diamond indicate the 95% confidence interval. 
Here we've got the significance of the pooled results. And here we've got test for heterogeneity. In other words, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, this indicates significant heterogeneity between the studies. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Stay and watch another video and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Write a comment below. I'll try and respond if I can. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care.